Welcome back. We're on part 21. Holy cow, I can't believe you made it this far already. Part 21. That sounds like some Dora the Explorer junk right there, doesn't it? Now let's go ahead and get started. I hope that while studying for sub uh, element two, uh, the technician exam, we're on sub element six, Charlie. And I hope that the two previous sections where I drew a whole bunch of schematic symbols for you have helped out immensely and that you'll recognize most of the parts on these schematics. Now, what is the name of an electrical wiring diagram that uses standard component symbols? It's a schematic. I only happen to have one type of device right here. This is just an RF connector. It's a BNC. If you were to have to use the pictures of every device that you were going to have to draw up there, uh, let's just say drawing a picture of some tape and this, then you're going to spend a lot of time and a lot of space drawing your electrical diagram. And so that's where the schematic symbols come in. You just have a couple for each device. And so we have down here in question two, it's asking us what is component one in figure T1? And this is a resistor. I call it Mr. Squiggles because it's funny. That's the only reason why. But the squiggles is the resistor. We'll go down. Uh, let me go ahead and tell you. Two is a transistor, three is a lamp, and four is a battery. Now there are other portions of this schematic that you don't have to know for this, but just in case, you have a connection points right here. You have a chassis ground. It also looks like Earth E, uh, but that's a chassis ground. And this is figure T1 is pretty simple. Now remember, out of this sub-element, six charlie you're only going to get one question there are 35 sub elements to element number two and so you get one question from each usually okay so let's go down to question three what is component two in figure t1 that is a transistor if you want to know it's called a bjt which is a bipolar junction transistor Question four, what is component three in figure T1? Figure three is the lamp. Now, most modern electronics are using diodes these days, known as light emitting diodes, but occasionally you'll see some of the older stuff uses a lamp. In question five, what is component four in figure T1? And this is a battery. Now, it is. I don't think they do this on the test, but the battery can be confused with, can you guess, a capacitor. A regular old capacitor has two parallel plates, but they're the same size. In a battery, you have the positive and then the negative. The positive is the long one, negative is the short one. So this is your battery. Okay, now we're to the more complicated schematic this one is a bear so question six uses figure t2 now i'll explain what this does this is this is your ac outlet it passes alternating current through your fuse you turn it on with the switch it goes through the primary of this transformer on the secondary side of the transformer it most likely changes the voltage to a lower voltage but sometimes it can go to a higher voltage I did electric guitar build amp building a long time ago, and I love tube amps. And you have to step it up usually to about 300, 400, 500 volts. Okay, so in this case, it is rectified by this diode into a DC circuit. It's smoothed out with this capacitor, which again, uh, which then turns on your LED and goes through this variable resistor, known as a potentiometer or a variable resistor. And that varies the voltage or current that comes out this side, the current, not the voltage, the current. The Zener diode has a set voltage for it. And then again, you have your chassis grounds over here, or your earth. 
Okay, but it's asking us what is component number six? And that is a capacitor. Component six is an electrolytic capacitor. I couldn't even say it. Electrolytic capacitor. And electrolytic capacitors have a straight plate and then a curved plate. And then it is separated by a dielectric. The other type of capacitor is just a regular old capacitor, and it's not electrolytic, and it has two parallel plates separated by a dielectric. What is component 8? Well, let's look at component 8 right here. Well, at first glance, it's a diode of some sort. That arrow tells you away, right away it's, it's a diode, the arrow with a line. But this one has two squiggles coming off of it, and that is light. This is a light emitting diode or an LED. Question number eight. What is component nine? Now remember Mr. Squiggles? Well, this is Mr. Squiggles with another connector to it. This one only has two connections. This one actually has three coming off of it. This is the wiper. And the wiper can go from shorting this, making it no resistance, to not being in the circuit all the way over here and giving you a full resistance. And that potentiometer is called a variable resistor. Again, I'm not really trying to give you an electronics class, but boy, howdy does it feel like it. Question number nine, what is component four? And component four is an inductor of sorts, but this is not really variable. They're fixed. It is a transformer. So this is a coil of wire wrapped around an iron core with another coil of wire wrapped around an iron core. They have some mutual inductance, and that's as far as we're going to go with that. I'm sorry. This is not an electronics class. This is studying for your technician exam, but I do get excited about electronics. All right. Now we have a different, this is figure T3, and this is the last one for the technician license. What, this is question 10. What is component 3? I did not prepare you for this one. But the bumps, if you remember, look like a coil of wire, right? Well, just like with the variable resistor, you have a variable inductor. This right here varies it from all of the inductance to none of the inductance. It creates a short across the coil. Um, when you get into uh, antennas and stuff, there's some neat stuff you can do with this right here. There's antennas that use this uh, as the loading coil, and that's a variable inductor. Uh, let's talk about the rest of these. These are variable capacitors. I didn't prepare you for those either, did I? Variable capacitors usually only have two connections, and they have something that winds down into them and winds out to change the capacitance. That's what these two are. So figure two is a variable capacitor, and four is an antenna. I actually have that tattooed right here on my arm or my, I guess this isn't really my arm, is it? It's my wrist. But I have ground, and then, of course, I got hair all in my circuit here, but that is a coil, that's an inductor, and then you have the antenna up at the top there. And uh, that, that it, I guess this would be considered cheating now, wouldn't it? Okay, so question number 11, what is component four in figure T3? Well, don't get it mixed up. It is not a transmitter. It is the antenna. That is, that is the component symbol, schematic symbol, for the component of an antenna. And we're getting down to the last question. Which of the following is accurately represented in electrical schematics? I hope you figured that out on your own because I sure haven't explained it up to this point except for once. But it is component connections. It's not wire lengths. It's not the appearance of the components because we said earlier your component might look like this. It might look like a mouse. might look like some tape. So it could look like a battery. This is a battery. 
but do you want to draw that? Heck no. Okay, so component connections. Let's go back to the simple circuit really quick. You have a connection right here. The resistor is connected to the base of the transistor. The one side of the lamp is connected to the collector of this trans, tra, uh, transistor. I can't want to say transceiver, and that's not right. Then you have the other side is connected to the positive side of this battery. The other side of the battery is connected to a metal chassis, which this is connected to the metal chassis. The emitter is connected to the chassis. And the negative side of the battery is connected to the chassis. So I'm just going a little more in depth. I did explain how the current flows through this circuit. And I did say, I hope, that this diode is connected to the capacitor. It's also connected to this side of this resistor, which is connected to the capacitor. And this side of the potentiometer is connected commonly to all the other three parts. So... This has been section C, that sub-element C of the technician license exam. And now we're about to get into some more stuff here about electronics after this. So, hey, come back for part 22. This is Rob, W1RCP. If you made it this far, like and subscribe. 73.